Hello ladies, welcome to Homemakers Radio. I hope you get a few things done while you listen today. And speaking of listening to things, I was asked the question if I would share some of the things that I like to listen to when I'm busy working. And uh, they might not be in keeping with the way I talk or what I present here, but a little bit different. I'll just let you know. I like someone called The Relaxed Guy. He puts out videos that he records himself of sounds. Uh, like a waterfall, or like a rainstorm, or like spring uh, sounds, birds singing. I don't know how he does it, but he has real equipment, and he actually does it. So I like that one. The other one that I like, I probably wouldn't appeal to any of you, but it's called After School. (laughs) And it has a few things in it that kind of apply to the way that... uh, tyrannical governments act and it has a few strange things in it but I I enjoy listening to it and then I also like Navajo grandmother who posts things from the desert that she uses she's a like a herbalist and she was the one I learned from about the uh, cedar or I, I believe it's called juniper here it's the branches that have the cute little rosette berries on them and she was saying how she could use these in the house and how the Navajo use them in the house and it it clears the air, purifies things and that you can put them in uh, water and heat them and it will send a steam into the air that cures viruses and just helps your general health and today I'm going to be talking about health in the home and so it's I'm going to weave in uh, your the things that you dwell on um, intellectually and how that affects your health and or may or may not. (laughs) So before you go uh, about your work, I want to share my teacup with you. It's an older one, but it was brand new when I bought it. I bought this at TJ Maxx before it was called Home Goods and it has the prettiest little white rose in there and or pink rose, right? and it is by Queens and yet the saucer is by a different company but I bought it in the 1990s and I learned from you that you know not to get rid of your cups because the handles are so small they were designed to grip holding your thumb to your forefinger so that they touched each other when you held it and it only works that way if there's a if there's a space in there uh, so hang on to those you can still use them now ladies I also want to talk to you about several things that we have that we're concerned with today but as far as health goes I really do think that dressing well in the day to get ready for your day at home which is the most important place in the whole world it's more important than the White House <laughs> it's more important than uh, than the um, castles and so today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the you know preparing for it and dressing for it and I think part of good health is wearing fabrics that are as close to natural as they can be I was thinking the other day looking at some of the fabrics uh, and trying to get my closet full of really good natural fabrics like um, wovens you know cottons and linens and silk and all the and woolens and all the things that people have worn since time began and thinking that um, you know I was thinking about sackcloth (laughs) because you read about that in the Bible sackcloth and ashes and you read about Job and um, sackcloth actually was a woven fabric and it was actually um, healthier to your for your skin (laughs) than some of the things that are made of uh, chemicals today. And so I would say get as close to natural as you possibly can because that's part of feeling good. In fact, people who have had uh, sleep disorders have tried getting linens and bedding that's real natural and not so many chemical produced products on their bed and they say that that helps so if that helps then perhaps 
wearing clothing that is more natural. Like I'm wearing a 100% cotton dress, which I made today because there's a feeling. It just feels more natural to my skin. It feels better. And it, it, there's, you know, it doesn't itch. It doesn't have a, it doesn't get hot. And so just that was just one suggestion I had for the getting dressed part today in line with health in the home. And of course, we want to have our home and our environment as uh, clean and pure as we possibly can, can and free from chemicals as we possibly can. And these days, you've got to look into everything, the building materials, the, the air vent system, uh, the heating system, what's in the carpet, the everything's outgassing and everything. But I thought that maybe we are too concerned about, you know, everything out there and not uh, careful enough to take care of our own uh, bodily health. That helps a lot, and that way we will have, will have some resistance against what's going on out there, against any of the, uh, all these, uh, all this bacteria that's going around out there. Uh, you can have a lot more confidence in uh, resisting it if you will prepare yourself through the different things that I'm going to suggest. And I, I didn't invent these. These were things that I read in several books. One of them was a book called Greater Health God's Way. If you can still find that, that's a good one. I think the author divided it up into possibly six things, and I will mention a couple of them. And so I think that uh, the clothing that you wear has a big uh, impact on your mood and on your just on your feeling and your health and, and whether you're standing up straight. Uh, and it used to be if you could get a new set of clothing, you just felt so much different. But the as the modern clothing came along, that had so many blends, were blending uh, polyesters and nylons and things, and these all are oil-based, uh, you, you might feel good in this new outfit for about a day, but after it's washed, it doesn't feel any different. And so healthy, I, I don't know, know what to call it healthy clothing or clothing that is uh makes your skin feel healthy i don't know um and i noticed that the baby clothing is really nice it's made of 100 percent cotton most of the time and it uh is hypoallergenic and it is free of all the chemicals and dyes because they try to be so careful with babies but i think that we oldies ought to have clothes like that too so <laughs> I think it's important to have a good mind and to renew your mind. The Bible talks about renewing your mind. And you can do that through prayer. If there are things that are bothering you, if you have anxiety, go to God in prayer. If there are things that you are carrying around and it's just weighing you down or things that you haven't done, you can ask God's help for that. And the mind is really one of the most important things in the steps to good health is to keep the mind healthy because your mind can depress your body and so but your mind can lift you up too so have a good mind and you know the Bible talks about how God has not given us a spirit of fear but of love and of a sound mind so you can have a sound mind I was listening to one of those crazy videos today about how a tyrannical oppressor can break down the mind just by discouraging it and creating so much drama and trauma and terror that uh, people will either shut down their mind and go to something that's easy to think about even if it's vice you know uh, or they will lash out and so they they either have a passive response to it or a or a very uh, aggressive response to it, and the fear when it becomes um, when it becomes really great, it it does invade the body and it affects the health. You can feel it. You can feel it in your throat. You can feel it in your uh, your breathing. It's real shallow and up high instead of in your stomach you you can feel it in the tightness between your ears and so 
so fear is one of the things you have to put away. And we talked about this yesterday, didn't we, uh, kids? <laughs> we said, if you have anxiety, it flies in the face of God's command not to have it. <laughs> and so a good mind means you have to renew it every day. You can't just go around saying, I have a good mind. You have to renew it. And when I mentioned replacing a good thought for a bad thought, for your own health's sake, you're going to have to keep a mental list of good thoughts that you automatically, uh, through your own self-control, switch over to when a bad, troubling thought comes to your mind. If you can't do that, then whenever there is a, a terrorizing thought in your mind, immediately get into prayer. Because that's such a good habit to get into. Now, another thing that I think... Um, The reason that people panic is fear puts panic in your body. And so while I'm talking about health at home, I want to talk a little bit about that. And fear and anxiety put uh, a person in a state of panic. And then in the need to escape from it, they, they either lash out at someone. I remember once when I, you know, whenever people have lashed out at you and you just couldn't figure out what happened or... It just seemed to be so out of character for them. It's possible they were in some kind of panic. And I remember uh, back when I was about 18, when all the teenagers were getting jobs at the fishing sites and and working for the harbors and working for the uh, canneries. And I saw a, a girl my age. It was about I was about 18, and she was walking on the beach, and she just looked so troubled. And when she passed me, I said, are you okay? And she said, you wouldn't know anything about it. You've never known what it's like to starve. <laughs> and so um, she was somebody that I thought, I, I didn't actually know that she hated me. <laughs> and she probably didn't. But sometimes fear will outweigh friendship. It will just totally dominate the friendship, it will outweigh love, and it will outweigh love in the family. You can even have a husband who has a secret fear of something, will turn on his whole family. Remember George uh, Bailey in uh, It's a Wonderful Life? He had this wonderful, sweet, miraculous family, little children, and a wonderful wife who really loved him, and and uh, there was problems at work, and Uncle Billy lost uh, the deposit to the bank. And uh, he realized they were all going to be in trouble if they didn't find that. So when he get, got home, he lashed out at his family. And his wife said, what's the matter, you know? Uh, and the house that he loved and the children that he loved, he was blind to all of that. So when someone has fear or panic, it outweighs love. And you will find people in their own family throwing each other other under the bus because they're in a panic or they're fearful of something. You might not even know what it is. But we must never let that happen because uh, people feel like they can only escape from this terror, uh, this mental terror, if they either lash out or if they check out. <laughs> so they're either going to be passive or they're going to be aggressive. But... This is why it's really important to know God and to manage our um, anxiety and manage our anger. You know, when the Bible says be angry and sin not, it doesn't mean you won't feel angry, but it just means you're not supposed to be lashing out at people. That's a sin. And so this is something we need to teach our children you can feel uh, indignant, and you can feel angry, and you can feel panic, and you can feel anxiety, but you never let it soil your soul by uh, letting everything out and lashing out. And, and I know the modernists believe that you should never hold anything in, but that's not what the Bible says. It talks about capturing those thoughts and keeping them and not letting them out. And so we need to know how to manage. And this is why it's so important to know about those scriptures and to know about God and to know that he is a refuge that we can go to. And we don't have to depend on the, the natural instincts of uh, either lashing out at somebody or using your anxiety in a way that's destructive. And so in 
health at home, I think it's really important to treat your people at home good first, to learn that because whatever you are at home, I was reading in an old book, but I don't know which one it was. I go through these books and I read a little bit and stick it back and, and it sticks in my mind and I forgot which book it was, but it was saying that at home is where your training is as parents or as children to love one another and to be courteous and to uh, handle your uh, your fears and your angers without and to be courteous and polite to them that's where it is because then if you learn that and it's ingrained in you then uh, you won't slip and fall when you're out with strangers or or someone provokes you somewhere else so they will never leave you if you have it inside of you embedded in you and you can do it yourself if it if you don't have it you can actually train yourself now I noticed something about the mind and that is how it affects the body is that people that are upset will eat wrong you know uh, most health practitioners will start out maybe with food uh, I like to start out with I'm not a health practitioner but I like to start out with breathing <laughs> breathing and um, getting uh, free of anxiety throwing that off and uh, but most people will start out with food and the th problem is is when you're under anxiety people who are anxious will head for the wrong kind of food they'll head for food that brings them sudden release or sudden relief and also the activity of eating takes their mind off of everything but um, they lose their logic, they lose their reasoning, and uh, they lose their ability to make a good judgment when they're angry. It's like a sudden rush of adrenaline, and it's not for good, it's for bad. And you know how some people, they get this sudden rush of adrenaline when they see someone in trouble and they can lift a truck off of someone, and, and that's what that's good for. But the rush of uh, anxiety produces something that's very destructive and you, and you can do something wrong you can lose your judgment and that's why it's so important to train the mind to think right and to think right thoughts one of the advantages of getting um, elderly is that you can look back and see that all of the media and the world's anxiety they've tried it all before and uh, you, you can sit back and watch and people wonder why you're not upset. Well, I know also that over the years, uh, people have tried to put people in a panic before and that we've been taught that we have a great God and if we do have a great God, why let us let us go to him and ask, ask him for favor and for rescue. So keep a good mind and renew your mind for health in the home. Also, uh, be sure and learn how to breathe. That is really enjoyable, learning how to breathe. And you can find different places to learn that. I'm, I'm not a breathologist. <laughs> but I think that that is really important because it feeds your, it helps your thinking, it helps your brain, helps your mind. The other thing is really real natural fresh food and water. And that means as close to its natural state as you possibly can get it and not uh, boxed, canned, packaged, preserved, uh, because it doesn't have the same food value. And uh, I understand, you know, when we were growing up in the winters, in the, in the wilderness in the north, uh, we had to have uh, our, our parents can the salmon during the salmon season. And we had to have our canned meats um, because there wasn't any fresh food at that time during these harsh winters and they also um, made preserves and things from the garden but they were lacking the the chemicals and the preservatives and all the extra salts and sugars that they put in the uh, commercial stuff so even as food valueless as it was it wasn't as bad as what we what you get commercially today but as close to nature as you can possibly get it. The other thing is to take, uh, to bathe in good water. 
and it just really makes a difference if you've ever have you've ever been to a hot springs or you've ever been somewhere where the water is really really natural and how refreshed you feel afterwards i think that's really important if you can smell chlorine in your water when you're bathing that's not a good thing uh, there has to be a way to filter that out or you know just find find out the most uh, the least harmful way um, so and then I had some friends a couple years ago that got real sick and they didn't know what it was it was before all this uh, before the war <laughs> uh, and it was in fact a few months before all this uh, came out and they said that their whole family was sick and could not seem to get well and I forget what all the symptoms were but one of them was that they couldn't um, they just didn't feel well they didn't want to get out of bed and they could not taste very much so they went to a, a physician I don't know if it was a naturopath or a regular MD but uh, they didn't know, they couldn't really identify what it was, but they said, go home, take hot baths, and drink hot tea. And so they did. <laughs> and uh, so this, uh, this has, this is old fashioned, um, you know, where the doctor used to say, take two aspirin and call me in the morning. The rest, the rest, um, and they said, go, go to bed, just stay in bed. And the rest, was so essential so good rest is also part of good health now that doesn't mean a mechanical eight hours of sleep at night because you might not be able to do that even babies don't sleep through the night um, but it just means different kinds of restful things during the day whether it's sitting still and reclining or whether it is uh, taking a nap or whether it is just sitting outside and doing nothing just restfulness rest your body and rest your mind and it's very hard to do if you have anxiety in fact you can't be healthy completely if you have anxiety anxiety will even make your skin change and break out and anxiety is so so dangerous spiritually mental, mentally and physically and for the home it's so important that the homemaker keep uh, a steady mind and a, a healthy body why is this important I think a lot of women at home neglect themselves because they're so needed and so busy and a lot of things are up to them to do but she is the most important instrument in the home she's the she's the one that keeps everyone going and her health is so important if she doesn't have health then nobody else has health she's got to see to it that she takes care of herself so these intermittent rest you know they talk about intermittent fasting all the time but I'm going to talk about intermittent rest <laughs> you know uh, deliberately included on your list you know uh, rest five minutes rest ten minutes and you will find your strength returning you will find your health returning you know how at the end of the day everybody's just kind of lagging and they just want to quit those little rest periods during the day can uh, revive you I had a book once that I was reading to you about um, a conversation and it was a book written I believe in the 1940s and it had a section in there about reviving yourself before you had to uh, go make a speech or a presentation or visit someone and you were tired and it was maybe after the day was over and you, you had to go do this and it was about how mentally you could revive yourself but it was also talking I believe in one part of it to close your eyes for a few minutes and so intermittent resting <laughs> And also, I believe, I do believe in intermittent fasting. I believe that you should let several hours go by between eating. Not between meals, but between anything you eat. I don't think that we should constantly be putting things in our mouth and keeping our, our body chugging away any more than you would want to keep the motor on in your car all day. Uh, it would be very bad for it everybody's body needs a rest so between what you eat 
let as many hours go by as you possibly can. You can always research this and read it yourself. And another thing that I believe in is to drink tea. And it doesn't have to have caffeine in it. You can make tea out of anything. I've made it, made it out of berries. You've seen previous videos where I've talked about this. Just uh, shake a few frozen berries out of your fr fridge from a package and uh, pour hot water over it. And just the aroma alone can be reviving. And, um, you know, we were told when we were growing up that drinking hot tea or hot soup or anything like that uh, flushes viruses out of your body. They freely would say that, just freely uh, recommend that, and, and people did that. But when they came to this modern era where people were walking around with uh, paper cups full of uh, uh, salt, we call them soft drinks, Cokes, Pepsis, things like that, um, that's not going to do it because they have ingredients in it that, that aren't very helpful. And so uh, they may be drinking a lot, but they're not flushing out uh, the viruses that people had claimed that the tea did. Now, the other thing that uh, I think is important for good health is laughing and having a really good sense of humor. Um, you know, you have to know something. If you're going to laugh, you have to know something about, I, I think I listed it here, have a knowledge of... Um, trying to see what I wrote. Irony, hyperbole, exaggeration. Well, that's hyperbole is exaggeration. Um, figures of speech and expressions. And that's where the fun comes in. And I've encouraged my family to make up their own jokes and we'll tell each other our own jokes. And they can just be little uh, plays on words or just little questions, uh, things that just kind of tickle you a little bit and I think it's really important to have a good belly laugh once in a while and uh, sometimes you can even laugh at some of the stuff that's going on um, nationally and through the media now the question was asked uh, concerning health was what happened to my Thrive class well I had Thrive classes on Zoom for my uh, descendants and uh, we got really into it they were show and tell you know show something you made and then we gave assignments you know of what to, something to learn something to try um, and then come back and show us well when after we'd had a few of these uh, they got so busy everybody got so busy including me uh, thriving. We, we just kept thinking of more and more stuff during the week to do and we were thinking of coming back to the Thrive class but we got so busy that we weren't able to keep it going. Uh, we do hope we can pick it up if necessary but it's kind of nice to work myself out of a job where I got everybody thinking about things that they could learn. I'd recommend books and I'd recommend uh, different learning, di learning different things how to make something. Uh, we did exercises and uh, showed them how to, you know, start their morning and did things like that. And but then they got so busy doing it that no one came back. <laughs> so I also was reading today. Speaking of food, <laughs> um, that there had there was a country during all of this war that had where the people received food from their government for a couple of weeks just to tide them over while they were um, kept in their houses locked down shut down etc somebody ought to make up uh, a song <laughs> about that and there ought to be a book written called the art of shutdown <laughs> or the art of captivity if there hasn't been one so there I've given you another title that you can write about uh, the art of captivity it's kind of like our thrive classes that we just created so many things that they could do at home or in their yard or just in their vicinity that uh, they became extremely productive but I was thinking about 
Egypt and the Hebrews that were living in the land of Goshen. And some uh, people who've done some a little bit more research and some of the history history behind it and the historians have have uh, speculated, and no one can really prove it for sure, but thought that there was evidence that the Hebrew slaves were given an allotment of food every day. And this might explain why they, uh, when, when they finally got their liberty and God brought them out, that they had to learn how to live in freedom. And one of the things they did was complain because the food bored them and they uh, wanted to go back and, and to Egypt for their uh, melons and cucumbers. And uh, of course they were wandering now, they were walking, they had tents and they, you know, camped every night and they weren't going to be growing anything like that. But uh, they, you know, people today do that. They forget that freedom is greater than food and freedom is greater than some little thing that you got back in the old place where you were enslaved. Um, this this problem too was I believe the Israelites were now having to be taught a new way of life after generations of uh, being subservient to uh, a government and so here's the problem you know we're all going to come out of this and we have to know how to handle our freedom how to think for ourselves and how not to be dependent on the government for so much I was watching somebody's video called Lost in the Pond I'm trying to think he's a British man that came to America and he was talking about the health system the health care system and how everybody buys their own insurance and and are, are pretty happy with they can shop around and buy what they want and uh, whatever the coverage is try to get something that they'll be happy with and he said that the best thing still that you can do this was phenomenal for him to say this um, he said the best thing you can do is stay healthy and I think you should all research your own health and stay healthy and uh, our children call us often and say you and dad have to stay out of the hospital because <laughs> we can't come. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it does. It puts a burden on other people if you get sick. So stay healthy. And fear and anxiety can break down your body and your mind. And uh, so as they came out of Egypt, they had to start depending on God. And it, it really is a beautiful thing once they started doing that, but they sure had to go through a lot of trials to get there because before, if you are uh, dependent on the government, they're going to take care of you. They're going to take you through your schools and your colleges, and, and then they're going to provide all this stuff for you, and then you get into their banking system and then all this, and you just kind of pulled along from, from kindergarten on. Uh, but when you discover liberty in the Lord you have to think for yourself now and you have to depend on God and you have to start getting using your brain quite a bit uh, and this is what God wants us to do and we're probably capable of far more thinking abilities than we even use and one thing I've noticed since uh, I've been thinking about health in the home um, well it goes without saying you're going to try to clean it and not use uh, so many detergents and chemicals in your home uh, vinegar can cleaning vinegar can use for, be used for just about anything and uh, but one thing I have known that really uh, this panic thing and this uh, fear and anxiety people that I have known for years who were really good business people had their own businesses uh, bought their own houses, traveled the world, uh, accomplished a great deal, um, just uh, very well educated, have uh, succumbed to this anxiety. And so they lose, they've lost this brilliance that they use to build up their own business, you know. Uh, and they, they tend to, it, it tends to break down their, uh, their thinking abilities, anxiety. That's why it's so bad for you. And that's why uh, tyrannical governments use it. That's why they use fear. It is such a better, it's better tool than a 
than a sword, that's for sure. And then there's a scripture that says, fear of man brings a snare. So I think that's very important not to be too dependent on uh, the powers that be to take care of us, but to trust in the Lord. And it will take you on a lot of interesting um, avenues. And uh, you'll start making these plans, and then they go awry. And you cannot uh, even depend on your own plans. But in everything, you have to turn back. What does the Bible say, and what does the Lord say? I want to read something to you from... Um, from uh, the Acts because this is the reaction of people that get um, they get ang panic and fear and it's the story of Stephen and he was seized by some people he began to talk in the synagogue and he said um, he began to talk and it said uh, during his talking they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. See, they didn't like truth. It it made them uneasy. And that's what people do today. It's, nothing has changed. That they feel anxiety when they hear truth. It really bothers them. And they secretly instigated men who said, they, they actually con, uh, contracted men who would say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. Now, they didn't say what the words were, and they never att attack the issue. They always just smear you, and uh, they're in a panic. You know, they, uh, they don't want to hear the truth. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him and seized him and brought him before the council. And they set up false witnesses who said, This man never ceases to speak against the, this holy place and the law. And so, then later on, uh, he, he stood and looked at them. I don't know how this happened, but normally you wouldn't be able to speak so long. But if you read his speech, it might take you a full 20 or 30 minutes. Because he went back in time and traced their own history, the ones that were accusing him, and told them where they came from, and how God brought them out, and where they are now, and all about Christ and even after he'd made that wonderful speech and it's in Acts chapter uh, 6 and 7 if you'd like to read it I don't think I have time to do that today but it goes one two three four pages long it's quite a quite a speech and so it says now when they heard these things they were enraged now isn't that the truth when you are uh, trying to reassure somebody and tell them the history of uh, the healthcare system or the history of a chemical that's in a in an injection or try to tell them warn them about the uh, dangers of it or 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 some kind of medication that's very foreign to the body uh, they they do the same thing they were enraged and they ground their teeth at him now that's interesting. They were so mad they ground their teeth. But nothing has changed because when people hear truth, they are enraged and they'll accuse you of blasphemy against their their God, which is, you know, whatever they hear on a media is that's their church, you know. So in the home, I think we have to be very careful to keep that out and realize when people bring it in. Um, they're also trying to break up something that uh, is a good force. You know, you're you're kind of like a barricade against all these things. If you're protecting your family and if you are looking for truth and if you're researching all of this. So this uh, health begins in the mind. And I would also suggest to go back to what I was saying in the last couple of videos. Start out with thankfulness. In the morning, as soon as your eyes open, that God has given you this day and name the day, that God has given me this, uh, you know, uh, second day of the second month of the 22nd year, something like that, you know. Just always acknowledge that day and give thanks for it. Sometimes you can wake up in the morning and the, the fear seizes you right away, and that's when you need to start turning to God. And so health has to be your incentive in the home. 
Now, if you are ever, you know, we should always um, hope for the best and prepare for the worst. So just in case things don't turn out the way that you prayed that they would, and if you uh, sometimes things don't work out the way you hope they will, be prepared. And I just had a, a little talk. Uh, with my ladies at the ladies fellowship that I have here every week to be a good steward at home and uh, show courtesy to others and uh, take care of things at home and uh, ask God's help for everything and be uh, aware of your job at home and don't worry about what everybody else is doing a lot of the Things that are coming around and that we're hearing are all manufactured and they're designed to keep us anxious. So be a good steward at home and have a strong courtesy of others and care of others and uh, the physical care of the home because that's your, that's your domain and that's the job that was given to you. Now, uh, Edgar A. Guest had a lot of poems where he talked to men about being careful not to bring the terrors of their day home, just to leave it at the door and not to sully that beautiful, sweet family and that woman that's in the kitchen cooking for him and those lovely children, not to be cranky when he gets home, just to leave it there before he comes in the door. We should admonish all of the people in our homes, the teenagers, the older people, everybody, not to bring that stuff in the house and not to talk about it in the house and sully the atmosphere. Uh, it can actually affect your health during dinner when you're eating. We've had to, over the years, remind people, not just in our home, but uh, Christians, uh, not to talk about things that turn other people's stomach or give them anxiety while they're eating. You will not uh, absorb the nutrients uh, the way they should be. You will, not, um, you will not digest as well as you should. And so it's very important to leave that stuff at the door and not let it enter. In the olden days, the home was considered a very sacred place, even more so than a church. You just wouldn't, uh, you just wouldn't come home and um, bring the world's uh, language and the world's music and the world's attitudes at home. Uh, I heard a mother say to her son one time, who was um, starting to. Uh, <laughs> say some things you know bring some ideas in from the world and she said could you leave your crown at the door <laughs> so and remember our heart our mind and soul belong to God and so we have to have some knowledge also of health and you have you are responsible to research your own health but one of the things that I have discussed with people is, what if, um, what if you did get caught in a situation where, uh, let's say there was a storm and all the electric went out in your little area, your little hamlet where you live, and uh, the only thing open was the meeting house, the church building and there's a men's bathroom and a woman's bathroom and then there's a kitchen and the water's working there and the electric is working there and the heat's working there and what if you all had to stay there a couple of days uh, for safety and uh, there'd been a terrible storm and a lot of damage to houses and stuff what if you all had to get in there I'm talking about these smaller uh, congregations of uh, 20 or less um, how are you going to behave to keep everybody from getting on each other's nerves? You have to learn to be, and this is where it's learned in the home, you have to learn to be courteous to everyone and not uh, contradict, talk back, uh, argue, or speak in an argumentative tone to people that you're cooped up with. And I think this is helpful too because if you're in captivity, like some of us, um, because we don't want to... Uh, we don't want to participate in, in what the world is doing out there in the commercial world. We just don't want to want any more of it. Um, that you're going to be together more. You're going to be home more. And so we learn to appreciate each other and love each other. And that's why 
one of the reasons I started Thrive Classes is because we could all get interested in something, learning to learning a skill, learning a uh, learning art, learning a language, learning how to sew, learning how to speak, learning how to sing, different things like that, so that your mind is on something else and uh, not getting on each other's nerves. And so how would you act? Think about that. You might want to talk this over sometimes as what if there was somewhere we had to go uh, for safety and there were a few other families there. How would we act? You know, how, would, you ha would you draw up a charter like the Magna Carta or something like that? Because I think it's really important that you have some kind of plan. And if you are... If you suspect that you might be uh, in captivity with someone, even your own family, have an agenda and uh, think of things that you're going to do. Let's say it, it happens. How are you going to carry it on? How are you going to remain um, strong and cheerful and lacking in anxiety? And list some things that you would do if you were in captivity with someone, maybe just even your own family. Now, people are really obsessed with health, aren't they? But they're obsessed with physical health. It's all about physical health. It's all about um, bacteria in the air, and it's all about getting a cold, and it's all about... But, you know, they could all get well and be perfectly healthy, but they would still have their minds, and their minds might uh, be polluted. And there's where people are neglecting uh, in the home... You know, we want we want our kids to be well, and and we're always watching them for fevers and things like that, and sniffles and that sort of thing. But what about uh, keeping their minds healthy, and their and their hearts? And so you need to think about some of this. And so be a good steward at home, uh, show courtesy to others, and show them how to be courteous to you back, and uh, take responsibility to care for others. Show good health. Take care of yourself in good health. And I'll just go over the good healthy things over again uh, that I mentioned. Breathing. Um, intermittent resting. <laughs> fresh foods as close to nature as water. Fresh food and water as close to nature as possible. Um, bathing in good water. Drinking tea slowly and in small sips. You know, it's interesting about tea. People that aren't used to having tea don't understand. Uh, they're so used to taking gulps from a straw in a paper cup and a, and a sugary soft drink that when it comes to tea, they think you're supposed to gulp it down and you hear the big gulp in their throat. <laughs> and it's really designed to take small sips and um, it's a quiet pastime. And it's a thoughtful time. It's a time to think. Um, ask God's help uh, for insurmountable, uh, seemingly insurmountable problems at home. Wake up with thankfulness. Have uh, have uh, healthy or natural fibers to sleep on and to wear. Uh, good laughter and good humor. And uh, and I think it's also good to keep your mind active, learning new things. And I might have missed a, a few things about this too. And always build one another up and be a good steward at home. So ladies, I hope this has been somewhat helpful to you. And I hope that you will click the link below and go and listen to this again on the post where I'm putting maybe a picture of the teacup and maybe a quick summarization of what I have just said. And I don't have comments here on the channel because it's just too much for me to manage so many things. So... I hope to see you next time. Talk to you later. Bye.